it's time to make a theme list. guys, this is me, Melorian, and this will be our continuation for our videos for new gamers. And this one will be an intro into what a theme list is all about. Now, if you've been following the videos so far as a new player, you know, you've gotten into it, you decide this is the game for you, you're excited, you start thinking about what your play style is, you start looking into your first list and building that and getting some games in and uh, starting to hone your skills. And now you're probably getting excited, you're going and you're posting your lists out on forums for getting some feedback and uh, they're probably telling you your lists are trash. And the reason why that is, is because, simply because your lists aren't in theme. Now, what is this? What's this all about? How do theme lists work in War Machine? And uh, how do you kind of get into them? Well, really, in Mark III, theme lists are kind of different than what they were before, but at the same time, they're a lot of, pretty much exactly what they sound like. They're trying to take your list, and they're trying to base it around a theme. Now, in previous editions, the theme lists were more uh, caster specific and they'd be trying to lead you down a certain path and the more restrictive things got, the more benefits you get. And in Mark III, that's really what you're seeing now. And if, uh, maybe I should be saying, if you're a new player, Mark III is just their versioning. So this is now the third version of the game and the way that they're handling theme lists now is that it's a little bit more open. Uh, if you go looking into what the theme lists are, I mean, there's not really faction books anymore, but if you look in War Room, or if you look on to uh, War Machine University, or something like that online, uh, what you can really do is look into what they're all about for your faction, because each faction has several theme lists by this point now. Uh, it used to be in the beginning that, you know, you maybe had like one theme list or something, but now we're at the point where each faction has several of them, and so I know that coming as a new player, it must be confusing to be like, well, okay, which one am I supposed to use? Uh, the internet says this is a good theme list, let's go with that. And again, I would take a step back from what the internet says is the right thing to do and start figuring out what's the right thing for you. So really what you want to do is start just reading through each one, seeing what they're about. And really each theme is going to be having a theme behind it that's going to start with a bunch of restrictions. And these restrictions are going to say, you can only take these certain war casters in this list. You can only take these certain war jacks. You can only take these units. You can only take these solos. Now, interestingly enough, some of these themes will allow you to have access to other units you wouldn't normally have access to. Uh, maybe these are mercenary units, maybe these are units from other factions, so they can really open up a different type of game that you're not used to being able to do before. Uh, but at the same time, we're already really saying it's a restriction, so it's really trying to lead you down a certain path. Now, to really learn where they're trying to head you down, read what the theme benefits are going to be, and there'll be things like, this list gets plus two inches of deployment, or this list gets an extra solo for every 20 points of units, or something like that. And what you want to be looking for is what those benefits are, because really, if you're going to go into a list and you're going to put on restrictions, you better have something in there that's going to be well worth it. In fact, there's some people who start looking at these and figure, that's not worth it, I really want to be doing these other things, uh, it's not worth doing that. And really, if you say that to all the themes, you can go and play out a theme with your list, but you're giving up a lot of potential. Uh, the, the real way to look at it is that a lot of these lists will give you access to things like 20 extra points or extra rules that go on your models. And so to able to justify some other options in combinations that would be out of theme, they have to be worth what you're losing. For example, if you're going out of theme just to really put in one solo, well, is that solo worth like 24 points? Because if that solo is like four points and you're giving up about 20 free points, that's a lot of points to be playing down. Just imagine if your friend said, oh, I'm gonna be playing, playing my regular 75 point list, uh, but you can play a 50 point list. You'd be like, no, that's not fair. That's exactly what it's like when you have a theme list versus a non-theme list. So extremely powerful if you can work your way into those restrictions. 
So again, read through each one, see what the restrictions are, and then look at those benefits. And if it's something saying, if you have X amount of points in infantry, you get bonuses, well then clearly they're trying to lead you down a way that wants to take more infantry. Now, that being said, all the themes not might be what you would like. You know, if you're a person who likes running all beasts or all warjacks or something like that, you probably want to be finding the theme list that's all about loving to take a bunch of beasts or a lot of warjacks. Or if you like taking a bunch of guns or something like that, well, look through the different themes and see which one of those are offering you the most amount of guns. I would say then the next thing you want to do is go crazy. And what I mean by go crazy is say, all right, this list is telling me that it likes taking lots of these. What happens if I take all of those things? Go all in, <clears throat> take as many of those things as you can, get all the bonuses, figure out all the free models that you get on top of it, and then realize how much of that do you actually need? For the example I gave you, for every 20 points of infantry, you might get an extra solo. So you go and you pack full, all 75 points full of units. Well, the thing to realize though, is that you start losing that benefit after 60 points, right? After 60 points, you're getting your three free solos, and unless you're playing a game that's larger than 75 points, that's as far as you're gonna go. Uh, on the flip side though, if it's something about Warjacks, the highest you're gonna be able to go is clearly gonna be the 75 points plus whatever the Warjack points of the caster is. And that's where you're gonna max out. And especially in that case, you might have to start saying like, geez, depending on what caster I go, I can get to one more free thing or something like that. Now, once you start realizing that, start saying, well, how much do I want to go into this? Is it worth jumping in all the way? Do I want to scale things back? And I really do have to keep this part vague because this has a lot to do with what you like. You want to go into these theme lists and get as much of these uh, bonuses as you can. If there's a bonus in there for getting plus two inches of deployment, try and find a way that really takes advantage of grabbing more of the table as fast as you can so you can have some real table control. If it's a game about getting plus one to go first. All right, same type of thing. Make sure you design a list that's gonna be taking advantage of going first and be able to taking that positioning or maybe with that plus one to go first, you're using it to go second and you're making sure you have the first chance to score. Whatever it is, you should be taking a look at those benefits and trying to figure out how to get the most from them. And maybe it's just from straight up points, right? Maybe there's gonna be no other real strategic benefit from what you're getting apart from the fact that you're just getting more. Maybe before you ran a whole bunch of infantry and stuff, and when you're running in this list here, you just get like 20 free points. Bonus, right? That's just great, that's just better for you. Now, you're gonna start realizing though that after you've gone in and you've gotten all these bonuses, that there are things you're missing. You're like, oh, this is awesome, but now I don't have any answer for when I need magical weapons, or now I don't have any heavy armor, or now I don't have any, you know, heavy shooting, or whatever it is, you're gonna start seeing gaps. And this is gonna have to start working into your list. If the list you were designing before was something that was gonna have this as its strength, well, it's not gonna be there anymore. And when we start getting into list pairing, now you're gonna have to really start saying like, okay, this has a definite weakness. Not only was it an, or an army list that was built around this idea that would have this one gap, now it's even in this theme that's making me stronger in one area, but really weak in this other area. Which really means that once you start working on that second list, that second list really has to work on that gap. And what that also then probably means is that if you're developing a pairing, you're not gonna want to have both of your lists to be exactly the same theme list because they're gonna have exactly the same types of weaknesses, which is probably not what you want, but we'll get into that type of thing later. So after that's done, just like how I said, how you're gonna be learning to be uh, developing your list, play games. Make your first theme list, like I said, where you maximize all the bonuses, bring you back to something that you're more comfortable with, and then play those games. 
and start realizing that, geez, this piece isn't working for me. Maybe I can change it for this. And in fact, you're probably gonna find that process a lot easier because you have fewer options, right? Before, when you had all the units and all the solos and all the casters, there was a lot of different permutations you might want to be putting together, but now that it's more restricted, well, there's just less options. So it should actually help a new gamer. In a way, it's almost better for new players to be going to a theme list because it's kind of helping them down the way to saying this is what your list should be. However, the reason why I didn't start you with theme lists for a brand brand new player is that you need to also develop what your strategy is, what your play style is. So I would hate to force a new player into a theme list and then they're like, well, I guess this is the way I play now. It's a lot better for them to get into the game, figure out how they want to play and then find the theme list, which just helps them do that even more. So there you guys have it. There is my list of the intro and the theme list. Of course, we'll be going to more into depth on you know the different theme lists and things like that later. If you have any other ideas or, or feedback on this topic, please feel free to put it down below. Uh, as well, if you have any suggestions of topics that you want me to cover for you, a new player, or even a more intermediate player, uh, please put that down below too, because I want to really make sure I'm making videos that you're wanting to be watching. And otherwise, we'll catch you later. Bye.